everyone and welcome to another video on Legends of Runeterra. Last time you guys enjoyed when I explained Freljord. And as you guys requested, this time we are going to have a look at the Shadow Isles. Now this video will be a little bit shorter than the previous one and that is because the Shadow Isles don't have that many known characters. A lot of the things will be new to us simply because we don't know a lot of these ghosts and specters. And even the couple that we do know you may not even remember. But don't worry, I will remind you everything. So because I know how long these videos usually are, let's just dive right into it. However, as you can see, Elise is the first card. We could just click on her and have a look at what she says, but everyone knows that her story doesn't start on the Shadow Isles. It actually starts in Noxus. Now among the Noxian cards we have the Precious Pet, which is just Elise's favorite companion. The description says she loves them all, she just loves this one more. And in the background you can see Elise and you can see that Elise made this little spider its own bed. The second spider among the Noxian cards is the house spider. The description says, my spiders love company. Shame that company never feels the same. Again, a quote from Elise. However, the reason why I even started with Noxus is because of this card, the Arachnoid Sentry. Now, although this is supposed to be one of Elise's spiders, I do believe that this specifically might be Elise herself. And that's because if you don't remember her story, Elise is a Noxian from House Kythera. But she serves Vilemo, the spider god of the Shadow Isles. What she does is that she lures her victims to the Shadow Isles. There she offers them to Vilemo and Vilemo makes her immortal. In this picture you can see that Elise found another victim. She managed to make another Noxian aristocrat fall in love with her. The description says, Oh, how she captivates me. Her endless legs, voice of paralyzing sweetness, and eyes red as the rose. To think she chose to dine with me tonight. The quote of hapless aristocrat. I would say remember this person because he will come back later, but you don't need to, because... Going back to the Shadow Isles cards, he is the first thing you see when you click on Elise. Now this picture is cool for two reasons. Number one, this is a part of a bigger story. Yes, the guy in the background is the exact same person she just made fall in love with her. But the second reason why this is awesome is because this picture shows what Elise does. She lures her victims to a Noxian boat and she sails to the Shadow Isles. During the entire trip, no one knows that Elise is actually a spider. And she is able to conceal her beautiful nature with beautiful clothes. And if you are confused what Elise is holding in her left hand here, well, that's actually her noble robe. Here you can see the exact moment Elise undressed from her Noxian clothes, to reveal what she really is. In fact, this exact scene can be read in her story on Universe. The description says, once the head of a powerful Noxian house, Elise's dark ties to the Shadow Isles granted her unnatural youth and beauty in exchange for a few unwitting souls offered in sacrifice. An easy decision. And when Elise levels up, you can see the same fool being prepared for lunch. And her upgraded version actually gets a different description. It simply says, beauty is in the many eyes of the beholder. Of course, this is a pun because spiders have many eyes. But that's not the only story Elise has here. Normally I would just go through the cards as they are in the collection, but I will now skip back and forth to give you the full second story that Elise has here. It starts with the description of the Spiderling. Here we have a different aristocrat, Lord Sesson. He also became a victim of Elise. And the descriptions of the spiders show us what happened. The first one says, what are you afraid of? It's just one little spider. This most likely comes from an early scene, where Lord Sesson was following Elise to the Shadow Isles, and when they marched into a cave, he saw a spider. But as they kept going, Lord Sesson realized that the spiders were with Elise. The description of Vile Feast says, My lady, I didn't realize you were such an, an arachnophile. Could you perhaps call them away from me? L lady Elise? Please? But this is not how the story ends. We got one more card. Right after that, after Elise's transformation, this is what we get. The description says, Lady Elise, where, where did you go? And this is actually what the card says when you play it in the game. Anyway, with that said, now we can go through the cards normally, so let's continue with Kalista. Her description says, In life she was a general, a protector, a hero, but as flesh gave way, she was left with naught but the blazing fires of retribution, an undying spirit of vengeance. And of course we have the leveled up version, but that one has the same description. Now what's interesting is that you need to remember that Kalista, Hecarim and the Ruined King are all from a kingdom that we don't really know where it is yet. There are some speculations, most of which point out that it might be near Noxus, but still nothing is confirmed. We still don't know where they are actually from. 
What we do know is that all the soldiers around Kalista are the soldiers from the army of the ruined king. And surprisingly enough, if you look at the background, you can see that one of the soldiers has armor very similar to Noxian armor. So this may be another hint that they really were part of the Noxian Empire. Then we have Thresh, whose picture actually shows Senna. And the description are just lyrics of Thresh's theme. Then we also have the upgraded version. Again, the description is exactly the same. And then we have Hecarim. That's not thunder, the shadow of war is on the horizon. Again, we have the upgraded version and again, the description is the same. Now, because Hecarim summons his chargers, we also have them and their own description. No longer bound by flesh, rider and beast became one, determined to race mindlessly into battles they no longer understood. Of course, these spectral riders are a combination of humans riding on their horses. That's why they look like centaurs. They are not actually undead centaurs, they are just people who merged with their horses during the ruination. Next, we have Fading Memories. Somewhat of a random spell that depicts a woman that is trying to remember her sweet life. But then there is Ravenous Butcher, one of the cooler cards from the Shadow Isles. The description simply says, you are what you eat. No further explanation given, but I'm not sure if I eat that. Then there is spell called Absorb Soul, which is simply Thresh's Lantern. Then there is Crawling Sensation, which has really creepy description. That creeping feeling on your skin isn't nearly as unsettling as the one underneath it. Then we have Mark of the Shadow Isles. Power, but at what cost? This is simply a reference to the fact that anyone can really travel to the Shadow Isles and embrace its power. The catch is that you are sacrificing your soul for it. Then there is Oblivious Islander. This is actually a little bit of a reference to the Shadow and Fortune story. There there was a fisherman on a boat during the harrowing. And as the madness surrounded him and undead creatures started attacking Bilgewater, he was a little bit drunk and he didn't really know what was even happening. At the end of that story, after Olaf, yes, Olaf traveled across the world to fight the undead, after he killed a giant undead kraken worm, he was just floating on the water. The fisherman noticed him after he was pulled on the boat. But being from Bilgewater, where everyone is trying to kill you, the fisherman didn't want to die and so he grabbed the knife in attempt to kill Olaf. Olaf pretty much just looked at him and the fisherman froze in fear. That's where that story ended. So I do believe that this oblivious islander might be a reference to that story. Then there is Sinister Poro. I wouldn't really consider this canon. I do believe that this is just a comedy card for the purpose of having Poros in a Shadow Isles deck. But then there is the Warden Spray. Now this man does look a little bit similar to the man that Elise captured, but I did do a lot of cross-referencing and these two people are two different guys. Anyway, the description says, He held his breath as best as he could, praying the Warden would move on. Little did he know, the pursuit would be the beginning of Thresh's delighted torments. Of course, even though it looks like Thresh is looking for the man, he already knows where he is. He is just toying with him. Then we have Arachnoid Horror. The description mentions that all of these horrifying creatures are just local fauna. So this being too used to be just a normal spider. Then we have the Black Spear, aka the Spear of Kalista. Again, the reason why this spear looks a little bit different is because it is from the armies of the Ruined King. A totally different nation. Then we have Cursed Keeper. This is pretty much just an example of a soul being tormented. I do believe that this is supposed to be representing someone who is carrying their burdens. Now you may be asking, what is the burden that this man is carrying? And the description even says, madness and time. Never was there more terrible pair. Because if we look at what happens if this man dies, his burdens are unleashed. The description says, time may have stopped, but the madness remains. It's just an example of all the madness that is happening on the Shadow Isles. Then we have Glimpse of Beyond. And remember, the Shadow Isles used to be the Blessed Isles. And the eyes that you can see on a couple of things from the Shadow Isles were originally a symbol of the Blessed Isles. The symbology may have been a little bit twisted by the Black Mist. The description says, I have erred. We were not meant to peer beyond the Pale Curtain. Whatever insight lingers there comes at far too great a cost. Quote of Airy Rance, Dauntless Vindicator. Now remember the name Airy Rance because there is a little bit of a story with her too. Here you can see that Airy Rance is titled Dauntless Vindicator meaning that she is from Demacia. And the description suggests that some Demacians looked beyond the Pale Curtain, by which they mean death. This may or may not come back later. Then we have Haunted Relic. First of all, again, you can see the eye, but also remember that the Blessed House was full of magical relics. That entire island was like a massive vault full of magical items. So when the ruination happened, 
all those magical artifacts became sentient. And that's how the majority of the evil spirits was created. In fact, looking at the second part of this item, you can see that it summons unleashed spirits. The description says, Each spirit another victim of the relic's allure. They seethe in silence as they await the arrival of the next greedy fool. Again, these things are the artifacts that are now sentient. Then we have Mist Wraith. This thing appears in the stories quite a lot. And it usually appears during the harrowing stories. In Shadow Isles during those times, this thing is pretty much common. The Spectres of the Isles shed their identities long ago to become amalgamations of pure, unappeasable hunger. Then there is Shark Garriott. The description says, She saw what? I see. Madness is cruel mistress, Apothecary. At least the others make some degree of sense. The words of a Damasian surgeon. Which suggests that there was a Damasian group who ventured onto the Shadow Isles. They saw the horrors it offers, and then they managed to escape. Some of them touched by madness for the rest of their lives. But you'll see that we know more about these guys. Then we have Soul Shepherd. The interesting thing about this is that she is still alive. She doesn't look undead at all. What's even more curious is the description. Only the Fallen knew that she did not walk alone. Only they could see the countless companions she led down the path to lands beyond. In other words, the living didn't know what she did. But the dead saw that she was shepherding loads of souls. This art piqued my interest. Not only do I really want to know who this person is, but also you can see a bunch of Demacian soldiers lying on the ground. Again, another proof that Demacia did try to explore these lands. Then we have stirred spirits. Some look at the ruination and only see the destruction and misery. Others see the glass half full. I'm not sure what else I can say about this. They can drink for all eternity. Then we have Dark Water Scourge. I am not exactly sure if this is a Kraken Worm. I thought that they are supposed to look like sea serpents. But either way, just like sharks, this is just a converted local animal. Then there is Frenzied Skitterer. Now, this kind of spider is not killing the victim or paralyzing it even. As you can tell even from the description, these spiders only trap the victims in webs. And they do this for a special reason. Look at the little pedestal beneath the victim. Remember that. Now remember it no longer because it is actually Fresh Offering Spell. Those spiders were preparing offerings. The description says, Kneel before your thanked god. Better yet, die before it. Because when an offering is served to the god, the god rewards its followers. This is incredibly cool. Because as you'll see from the description, it seems like Elise does have some kind of control over Vilemore. Who is your god? What can your god do? Will he let you wither and die defending him? Or will he give you life and vitality like no mortal has ever known? Why serve a god who won't serve you? The quote of Elise. You see, this reveals that while Elise doesn't control Vilmo, because she is a loyal servant and she's giving him a lot of offerings, Vilmo is willing to help Elise back. Not just by making her immortal, but by attacking specific regions. For example, this to me seems a little bit Demacian. But now you may be asking, how the heck did Valmo get from Shadow Isles to Demacia? Or pretty much anywhere else in the world? Now that is a question I don't have the answer to. I assume that Valmo can just borrow underneath the world. Which is pretty cool, let's be honest. But either way, we got more lore for Valmo, and that is pretty awesome. Then we have Iron Harbinger. It's pretty much just another one of Hecarim's soldiers. Then we have Mist Skull. Leaving behind a foul parody of life. I have seen it corrupt my lands. So I go now to those cursed isles to end this. Airy rants, Dauntless Vindicator. This is the reason why the Demacians ventured into the Shadow Isles. They saw the Black Mist corrupting not only just Bilgewater, but other parts of the world as well. And they wanted to end this. And so they sent a small army to the Shadow Isles to see if they can deal with it. But as you'll see, they were not as successful as they thought they would be. Then we have Onslaught of Shadows. It's Hecarim's Hoof. Then we have Phantom Prankster. Her cruelest trick wasn't slaughtering the soldiers who trusted the cries of a little girl, but sowing doubt in the survivors so they were never sure to ignore the cries of their own daughters. That is creepy as hell. Again, this time you can see the Massian soldiers. This is one of the encounters they faced when they traveled to these lands. Then there is Scribble of Sorrows, a cursed living parchment. Now, you may be asking, how can a parchment get cursed? Well, if that parchment becomes sentient, there are ways to torture it. After all, Thresh managed to torture a living mirror. So what is this fellow's curse? 
Little did the author know that soon the ruination... The ruin... No, 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 that's not right. The ink spilled again. Little did the author... No, no, no. It reminds me of my finals. Then there is Splintered Soul. I lifted the body from the water to identify the poor soul. As I laid my hand upon its shoulder, it turned and showed its face. It was... me. Ari Rance, the Masian soldier. You can notice that she's no longer a Dauntless Vanguard soldier. She is just the Masian soldier. I wonder if this is a reference to the fact that the rest of her squad died. And so she was no longer a member of the Dauntless Vanguard. Because the Dauntless Vanguard was gone. Anyway, her story will still continue. Then we have the Undying, which may be a reference to Voldemort? I mean, it even has a wand. The old martyr remembered rallying his comrades to their doom, but it had been years since he could remember why. Then we have Ancient Crocolith. Now notice that the Crocolith has some clothing on him, and he even wears the Eye of the Blessed Isles. So I do believe that this was a local creature, perhaps even uncorrupted somehow. The description shows him singing. Put them in the cage, dum de dum pluck off every soul one by one. Never let them go, no, no, sir, else them spirits make a quite a stir. I don't know the melody, I made it up. Then we have Chroniclers of Doom. Now first things first, I love the armor. I love the mask, I love the crown. I really like this design. The description says, There was a time when she sat with her father, a lord curator, as she studied the dusty tomes. He hoped one day she would take on the mantle, but not like this. Then there is the box, which nobody escapes. Then there is Wraithcaller. Now this is a spectral that is totally silent. In fact, she doesn't really do much. But the awful thing about her are the things that come with her. Then there is Eternal Remeter. Again, notice all the triangles and eyes. All of that is the Blessed Isle symbology. Spirits, lend your voice to mine. Together we will call down a darkness unending. So pretty much we have no idea who this is. Then there is Grasp of the Undying. Although it's a rune in League of Legends, here it doesn't actually tell us anything. Then there is a spell called Possession. Again, the armor on this soldier could be anything really. It doesn't seem to be Demacian, so it's either Noxus or it is the Ruined King's army. Then there is Tortured Prodigy. He toiled night and day, perfecting his composition. Then in a blink of an eye, a dark silence blew through him. Others screamed and ran for their lives. He noticed nothing. Just a little bit of storytelling showing you what kind of people lived on the Blessed Isles. Then there is Withering Veil, showing you that it is the screams of the souls. Because yes, even though the souls are technically with the Shadow Isles now, the Black Mist doesn't distinguish friends or foes. Everyone screams in torture. Then there is Atrocity. Killing means nothing to those who cannot know death. Which is the reason why the riders of Hecarim just ride around and kill anything. Then we get to the interesting creature, starting with the Soul Gorger. The description says, As our ships near those haunted islands, I ponder this. Did those nightmarish creatures originate on these twisted shores? Did they ever truly live? You can see that the quote is from Ari Rent, the Masian soldier. So going back to what I said before, this card actually confirms that Ari Rent was a Demacian soldier first, Dauntless Vanguard later. So she did survive the attack on the Shadow Isles, because this card is one of the first parts of the story. This one talks about what happened when they arrived on the shores. Then we have the Rekindler, with a pretty cool description. What use does a dying candle have, other than to light its successor? This is a pretty cool Dark Soulsy character. But then we get Rasa the Sunder, and this is probably my favorite Shadow Isles character. We were told they called it a Legend's Journey. We were going to, for Demacia's future, we sailed with such hope. But all, all those lives, for what? Ari Rens, Demacian soldier. This is what made them retreat. All the things you see at the bottom, all of those are Demacian soldiers. And you may be wondering, what does it look like when this creature cleaves through someone? Well, as Night's nice Harvest shows, it literally evaporates everyone. This card is connected to the Sunderer, so this shows you not only the size of his weapon, but also what it does. Then there is Vengeance, which of course is connected to Kalista. The betrayed invoke Kalista on their dying breath, hoping her spear brings them vengeance. And of course, usually it does. But then we finally get our first and probably only side character from Shadow Isles that we know. If you look at the blade that is half lit with the power of the Shadow Isles, you may remember this guy from a story we covered on our channel. Because ladies and gentlemen, this 
is Ledros, Kalista's lover in life, and the only man who was able to bring Kalista back from the madness. Unfortunately, he didn't succeed, and in the end, instead of saving Kalista, he was consumed by the madness as well. Most spirits lost themselves as the passing years eroded their memories, but anguish anchored Ledros to his past. Some things, even time, cannot absolve. Now, this makes me think that maybe Wright created Ledros because Legends of Runeterra was already being made. And so, because they had Commander Ledros as a card, it was easy to use him in the story for League of Legends. Actually, looking back at some of the cards, I think a lot of these things happened this way. We'll have a look at Ionia next, probably. And you'll see that some of the cards there were also made before the stories. So Legends of Runeterra was teased right before our eyes. But we never realized it, nor was there a way to really realize it. Next, there is Spectral Matron. The ruination corrupted all those caught in his path. The kind became cruel, the brave became brutal, reason gave way to resentment. We didn't learn much about this person, but I wonder, what the heck is she holding in her hand? Then there is card for the ruination. Now, this isn't the Black Mist. The ruination is the event when the Ruined King cast the massive spell that destroyed the islands. So this is what it looked like when the islands were actually transformed. In fact, the ruins below are Helia, the capital city of the Blessed Isles. You can see the similarities in other pictures as well. And the description is a direct reference to the story of the Ruined King. To think something so pure as love could cause something so cruel and inescapable. Of course, the Ruined King caused the ruination because of the pure love to his queen. Then there is the Harrowing. The description says, On certain nights, a tide of hungry spirits swell the black mist. It carries them across the seas to prey on the living, and feed the growing darkness with foul new on life. And now, I saved the best card for last. Scuttlegeist. Now I quickly want to mention that the armor at the bottom here, that does look a little bit Demacian, but it also looks like the Trifarian Legion from Noxus. So again, it is really hard to distinguish these two armies, especially since the contrast on these pictures is so low, to give you that creepy vibe. Anyway, this giant beast has this description. Once a beast of burden for a kingdom long forgotten, this monster now scavenges across forgotten battlefields, adding scrap to its shell and the souls of the dead to its core. Of course, you can see that at the back of this giant crab, there is all the scrap. Its ships, its buildings, it's anything it can pick up. And you can see how it is inspecting a dead soul. As the description said, this used to be a normal beast. Well, quote unquote normal. It was still massive and it was a burden to the kingdom long forgotten. Which in this case probably means the Blessed Isles. But looking at this, it seems like the burden got even bigger. But that is it for the Shadow Isles. As I said, next time we will probably have a look at Ionia, because I saw other people requesting it. But still, remember, comment down below what nation you would like to see next. As I said, we didn't get a lot of new lore here, but these cards still served as awesome world building. So, with that said, because these videos are already too long, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.